we put our parts box in the safe so they're safe. Hey everybody, you're watching Cole the Corn Star. If you're even slightly interested in farming or just want to watch a 21 year old farmer get some stuff done, you're in the right place. If you like the video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you have any questions, be sure to write it down in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. All right, that's enough of me blabbering my lips. Let's get into today's video. It's been a week since I've been in the shop. Let's see what's new. Well, look at that. Looks like we have a full house. The planter is done. There's just a few small adjustments we need to do here and there, and then the planter will be field ready. We got our row shutoffs module, or whatever you want to call this, hooked up. So all the row shutoffs should be ready to go. We just got to get everything calibrated with the monitor. Let's hop inside the cab quick. Would you look at that? We've never had this before, so this is going to be something else. This right here is our monitor for auto steer. It's not hooked up yet. It'll wrap somewhere behind the wheel here. It's like a spaceship in here. Look at all these wires. All this stuff's not fully hooked up yet, and then we'll find a little better home for stuff, so it won't be as messy, but there are a lot of wires. Sitting in these boxes here is an auto steer system for the John Deere. This is a steering wheel mounted unit on a gear, so it won't slip. And this unit here is what's going to guide the tractor straight across the field. That way we can be more efficient with how we're planting, we'll have more even spacing, and we'll be able to run longer hours without getting as tired. Last year, Dad was having a heck of a time on some days. If the sun was just right in the sky, he couldn't see his marker on the ground, or when it got dark, he couldn't see the marker on the ground, so that cut into a lot of productive hours that we could have been out in the field planting. So we're hoping by putting in this new system, we'll be able to run a lot longer hours, we'll be able to focus more on the planter and how that's performing, instead of where we're trying to go. We can mount this auto steer system on anything with a steering wheel essentially, but there are a couple reasons why we decided to put it on the John Deere over the case. The first reason being the John Deere has weights in the front and that helps keep the front end more stable. The case can get a little light in the front end if you're pulling something heavy. The second reason comes within the steering itself. The John Deere has a little bit tighter steering so we figured we'd get better responsiveness out of the auto steer system with a tighter steering. The second reason comes with the steering itself. The John Deere has a little bit tighter steering than the case does, so we figured our auto steer system would get better results with tighter steering. Reason number three is on the case, the three point hitch is a little finicky sometimes and we didn't want that acting up on us in the field. Reason number four comes in the cab. The John Deere's cab is a little cozier, but all the monitors have a better place to be mounted, so we wouldn't have to make anything to mount them on. There's already existing places. We also put in a new radio in here a couple years ago, so the radio's better. We got a guy who installs these all the time. He's gonna come out this morning and put it in the John Deere, and then he's gonna take it outside and calibrate everything, make sure it all works, and then he's going to recalibrate the GPS and the sprayer as well. In the near future here, we are going to be working on the Haggy sprayer as well. We'll be giving it an inspection to make sure everything is up to spec, and if anything needs replaced, we'll fix it. So far, we've already blown one hydraulic hose. When Cooper was bringing this home, he unfolded it to make sure everything was working okay, and he blew a hydraulic hose right here. And then on the 4880, we decided to replace these two hydraulic hoses on this side and the same two on the other side, because we figured we'd better do it now before it does it in the middle of field work. Wow, my voice just died on me. Told you guys, I'm still going through puberty. That's what's going on in the shop right now. It is really nice outside, so I'm going to get out there and do some stuff outside while I can before it gets not so nice outside again. So let's go see what we can do out there. Wow, the Geo needs washed. I'm gonna run over to the main farm quick, go grab the Freightliner, bring that home. The grain trailer on it has a lot of mud underneath and I wanna blast that off and I wanna blast the Freightliner off. Then I'll bring it back over there. And it might be too muddy to unhook it, but if it's not, we're gonna unhook that trailer and then we're gonna hook it up to the sprayer tanks. Once we get it hooked up to the sprayer tanks, then we can pull these by the shop and we can get everything serviced and ready to go on this trailer. There's the Freightliner. As you can see, it's pretty dirty. Luckily, this is the easy trailer to clean. I think we just pulled uh, Zach from uh, Millennial Farmer here. The battery, surprise, surprise. Yeah, look what we got here. 
We decided to put the sim out of battery charger. We're gonna bring this tire into the tire shop. We need to get a couple belts for an auger. And I think that's all we need in town. Well, thanks, Dad. You're welcome. Did we smoke them? Well, dirt target. Yeah. No good. Take that, I'll see if I find a screwdriver or something. Okay, good to go. All right, let's try this again. Perfect. All right, here's the trick to cornering with the semi. You gotta take this bad boy wide. We don't wanna put the trailer in the ditch. Yeehaw! We have arrived. Oh yeah, that thing broke off, so vice grips to the rescue. This is what's going to be done. I'm going to go in, get the power washer, bring it out here, blast off the trailer, the underside of the trailer, up under the fifth wheel, the semi itself, get this all clean, we'll let it dry. We'll bring it back over to the farm later. Probably put it in the big machine shed. If it's dry, if it's not dry, we'll wait till it dries so we can get it in there. Then we're gonna hook up to those tanks. Cole, the corn star, gets so wrapped and up into power washing, he's not hearing me that lunchtime's ready. Cole, dinner time, I'm gonna go up and eat. What's that? See, he doesn't even hear me. I'm gonna go up and eat. You wanna eat? Yeah. Now he can hear. Food is his number one best friend. He's like George, eats all the time. They're giant pigs. Now take everything I did on that side and we'll do it on the other side. Ah, that's nice. I think we could retrofit those tires onto the sprayer. What do you think, Dad? Oh yeah, definitely. Not a problem. Might be a low rider. The semi is all washed up and uh, we're gonna bring it over to the farm, put it in the big machine shed, bring it back, power wash where I couldn't get to when the trailer was on, and then we'll hook it up to the sprayer tanks. Hey, little buddy. What you doing? You just chilling? Dude, you're like a dog. After a lot of headache and hassle, we finally got the trailer unhooked in the building and tucked away to the side. We got it a little close to the wall and then the jacks didn't want to work so we had to bring in some house jacks and we were so close we couldn't get our handle to crank in. We finally got it to work. Got the Freightliner back home. I have all the mud power washed off it now. I probably power washed mud for three hours today. This thing was caked. I don't know if you guys remember but during the fall it was very wet and muddy. So this had like this much mud on everything. So any of you guys who've ever power washed before know when you squirt one area and this area is already clean, all this mud over here ends up over here. So you end up washing the whole thing like 17 times. It's good to go now. We'll let this dry overnight. Right now it's 12.47 a.m. We just got done changing engine oil and transmission fluid, did a full flush, and then fill on these VW cars. It's weird. This is for my friend Garrett. We just got that done, and he's cleaning up tools right now. But I figured since I'm awake, I might as well stay awake a bit longer. I'm going to clean the shop. Floor is super dirty. There's a million tools out. Then I'm going to pull the sprayer in, and I'm going to clean the cab out. And then I'll probably go to bed after I do that.
this and this for two weeks worth of dirt. Two weeks, that's a lot of dirt. So now what I'm gonna do is find all these miscellaneous tools that are laying around that we don't need to use right now and I'm gonna get a five gallon bucket, I'm gonna toss them all in the bucket and then I'm gonna go bring them over to where they go. I find the five gallon bucket way pretty effective because then you're not grabbing a handful of tools and carrying it over, you can grab a bucket full of tools and carry it over, therefore you can get a lot more done in a lot quicker time. It's currently 2.19 a.m. I'm going to be tired tomorrow, but I'm going to get this shop clean before I go to bed. I'll be able to get all this stuff cleaned up tomorrow, especially all this once this tractor gets done. And then a lot of this stuff is just trash that needs to be burned. The snowmobiles will be out of here tomorrow, hopefully. And hopefully we can get this out of here hooked up to the real disc, get the other four-wheel drive tractor in here, get that serviced and ready to go, hooked up to the disc, get the disc fixed. And then just a couple things left on the planter, get the shields back on the combine, and then we'll be in business. I'm gonna pull the Haggy in and the Mini Cooper and possibly my car if it'll fit. this morning give me a few minutes to talk to you well Cole's not down here he might not be down here for a while today guys ladies gentlemen little ones old timers the whole works uh, woke up around 3 o'clock last night Cole wasn't home yet so I didn't know what he was out doing when I went to bed at 10 30 last night he was still down in the shop well about 3 o'clock in the morning I hear equipment running he was still down in the shop so this is three in the morning and i'm not sure what time he came up so i don't expect him for a while so this gives me a new time to talk the last video cole put out some of the people said i was talking awful loud well over the years i had to talk loud or uh cole would not hear me he would like just ignore me so i got used to talking kind of loud no sign of Cole the corn star yet. I don't know what he was doing. I sure couldn't see anything that he got done. So today what I'm working on, I'm working on the planter and I'm gonna try to get it set up for the population. And on our corn, I think last year we were in that 33,500 population on our corn. I think this year I'm gonna bump it up to 34,500, but I'm gonna look in the book and see what they think. It keeps raining and stuff, so more rain. We're going to put some corn out there to drink up that water. So, hey, one of your comments last night was, and I've seen it a few times, people missing their fathers, mothers, whatever. We put our parts books in the safe so they're safe. But anyhow, my father a year ago on March was diagnosed with brain cancer, stage four. We worked together every day. We were best friends, partners. And uh, so I know what you're saying. It's, we gotta enjoy our parents where they're here and our wives, kids, whatever, because one never knows. 
I was lucky. I had a lot of neighbors, friends, cousins step in. And last spring, they did a lot of planting for me. They were lifesavers. I got to spend a lot of time with my father and uh, he passed away in June. So it's been a big change for me and the boys. And I've been doing a lot of stuff by myself while the boys are in school. So that's why we're kind of slipping on a few things. We're trying to get things back in order. So with the help of Cole, I think we're gonna do it. He's pretty organized. But anyhow, I just wanna thank you in the comments about your parents and stuff. That is true. And I'm lucky I get to spend a lot of time with my boys working side by side like me and my dad did. And uh, them are things I'll never forget. They were the best moments. So thank you guys. One thing in this refrigerator that will help keep you and your family looking young and healthy, mainly for you guys, it's in this fridge. And I know a lot of people probably won't tell you the secret, but I'm going to tell you the secret. Heinz ketchup. I go through these things like crazy. Every time my wife goes to town, she says, is there anything we need at the grocery store? I want to have three or four extra bottles on the shelf at all times. But Heinz ketchup will keep you looking young and it's good for your prostate so you won't get prostate cancer, guys. So make sure the wife buys Heinz ketchup. And when they say there's not a difference in ketchup, there's a huge, huge difference in ketchup. As you can see, this is pretty messy. I'm gonna clean all this junk out of here, reorganize the tools, wipe everything down, wash this seat cover, then the sprayer will be ready. Some of you in the Midwest and across the country might have experienced this, but my car got rained on and then it was dirty after the rain hit it. I guess dust from Texas got blown up into the atmosphere and then it came down as muddy rain. Sprayer cab is just about all the way cleaned out. I just gotta wash the window. Cooper's backing out the 4880. He's gonna go hook that up to the real disc. They put new fuel filters on, so that should be all ready to go. I think they're checking air pressure right now. I'm going to do my radio presets, so that way I have my radio working in here when it's time. There he goes. Me and my dad got the big Massey down the 4880 and we brought it over here to grandpa's to uh, hook on the field finisher. Got hooked on that and then I field finished up front here so we can uh, see it with alfalfa. And then I spread some seed on it and now I'm just dragging it to work in the seed a little bit. And then uh, hopefully it grows here because it's supposed to rain tomorrow. So that'll get it started off on a good start. Okie dokie, it's all clean. I'm gonna pick up some trash in here, so that way I can bring this stuff out and burn it. We're getting quite the trash collection in here. Dad pulled the planter outside. He wants to unfold it to make sure everything's gonna work okay. And it looks like mom is gonna wash her van. Shop is getting cleaner, slowly but surely. There's just been a lot of stuff that's been brought in and out this past couple weeks. I'm going to do a bunch of sweeping again. Dad needs some help with the planter, so we're going to go help him. This particular type of planter kind of has a mind of its own. It's a little bit finicky at times. And the first time we bring it out every year, we always have a hard time getting the middle to go down. The outsides go down, but the middle stays up. And so we got to remember the little trick to it. It's just kind of like wiggling the buttons just right to get them to work. It's weird, but I guess they're all like that. This right here is stuff we look for because this will rub it through. So we want to wedge something in there so that it won't rub. Kind of like this. That'd be an expensive hydraulic hose to fix. It's a long one. I think we got it working now. Hopefully. It always gives us a headache at first. Then we get her figured out. Well... 
Planter's running good, guys. Daddy Cornstar out trying out the planter. Of course, he's on his phone. Now that I got the front done, I'm going to work on the back corner here. I'm going to clean around the snowmobiles, then load the snowmobiles up, bring them over to their summer vacation home, and then there'll be a nice spot back here for a vehicle or other things. When you're working in the shop, if you have an area that's messy, it just gets messier. So I just want the whole thing to be clean so it'll stay cleaner. Ah, the ultimate battle, the 4840 Massey Ferguson versus the 4840 John Deere. I'm gonna get these snowmobiles loaded up now, hopefully, and Dad just ran over to the main farm. He's gonna go load Ronnie with a load of corn, and then he'll be back here in a little while. Unfortunately, this is the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you liked the video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you have any questions, write a comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next video.